Hello everybody, welcome to Blue Marble Science. Today we're going to have a look at Wits It Gets It. That's a pretty clever name. Wits It Gets It. The problem is Wits It Does Not Get It. Warning, severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out the oven mitts, push the monitors back out of punching range. Let's light this dumpster fire and have a lot of fun. Um, I just wanted to cover the basics real quick about why it's provable that the earth is flat because it's been a while um, so yeah we were all indoctrinated and told that we live on this tiny speck of dust in this ever-expanding universe a uh, tiny speck of dust you mean something like this uh, that's Madagascar just out of curiosity what do you think a big speck of dust would look like so I'm gonna break this down for some globers and hopefully they grasp the magnitude of what I'm saying. Well, we'll certainly give it a try. Go for it. So it's commonly known and accepted in intellectual forum that when you make a positive claim, you have what's called the burden of proof. You have to substantiate your claim with evidence. So saying something like this would require you to produce evidence. It's provable that the Earth is flat. Okay, go for it. The globe Earth is a positive claim. Not only that, but it's a positive claim of specificity, okay? It claims axial rotation of 1,040 miles per hour east of the equator. It claims a circumference around the equator of 24,901 miles. It claims a radius of 3,959 miles. So it's a positive claim of specificity. Positive claim of specificity. Wow, that sounded impressive. You know, it'd be even more impressive if you didn't have your hat on backwards when you said it. Now, you're about to try a burden of proof reversal. You're about to try to tell us that we have to prove the heliocentric model, when in fact that is not the case. The heliocentric model is not a claim. It is established, recognized science. If you want to disprove that, you need to bring some evidence, specific evidence that proves this is not true. If you want to say the Earth is flat, you need to bring some evidence of a flat Earth. Uh, flat Earth doesn't actually claim a definitive model. We don't have all the information required to make a model. We don't have the information required to make a model. You know, this is that lame excuse that we hear flat earthers make all the time. And it's just simply not true. You have every bit of the information available to you that I have available to me. You can go to libraries. You can go to universities. You can go to online lectures. You can do any of that yourself. It's all there. No, the problem is not that you don't have the information. The problem is you don't have the education necessary to understand the accepted model, and that is your problem. You're trying to make it our problem, but it's actually your problem. So, here's the deal. Axial rotation has never been substantiated. They tell us that we're spinning around 1,040 miles per hour east, but it's never been substantiated. You know, simply saying that doesn't make it true. It's been shown that the Earth has axial rotation in so many different ways, it's hard to keep track of them. But again, you're trying to reverse the burden of proof. We're not obliged to prove to you that the Earth is rotating. It is your responsibility to prove that the Earth is stationary. That is your claim. Show us that a Foucault pendulum will not rotate. Show us that a ring laser or fiber optic gyro will not indicate a 15 degree per hour drift when it's mounted on a stationary surface. Come up with an explanation for how a gyro compass will always lock on to true north that doesn't involve rotation of the platform it is attached to. Prove that weight doesn't vary with latitude. Stop saying that we have to prove the Earth is rotating. No, you have to prove the Earth is stationary. 
one of the most corrupt establishments ever, if not the most corrupt establishment ever, brought you this fairy tale story that you evolved from apes and that you're on a tiny speck of dust and there has no evidence. So we've established axial rotation literally has no evidence. And Globers will bring up Foucault's Pigulum, which is from 1851, and then like 70 years later, in 1922, Einstein said, I've come to the conclusion that, you know, the movement of Earth will never be detected or can never be detected with observable phenomena or optical phenomena. That was a misrepresentation of something Einstein said. What Witsit just tried to do is leave you with the impression that Einstein said you can't detect the motion of the Earth, and that's not at all what Einstein said. In an impromptu address to a group of students in Kyoto, Japan in 1922, Einstein was talking about the development of the special theory of relativity, and he said this, Since then I have come to believe that the motion of the Earth cannot be detected by any optical experiment though the earth is revolving around the sun. He was not talking about a Foucault pendulum. He was talking about optical observation of the heavens. So it's pretty crazy. Like one of the, the little leaders of their religion that they prop up, the incestuous grabbler known as Albert Einstein, himself knew Foucault's pendulum wasn't a sufficient postulation to substantiate axial rotation. So it's a clown world whenever the Globers just regurgitate that because they heard somebody like Mooktoon or Quite the Tight Shirt say it and they don't know what they're talking about. They just regurgitate things. Seems to me you're the one regurgitating things, pal. When are you going to get around to proving the Earth is flat? That's what I'm waiting for. And maybe you should listen. Okay, so axial rotation has never been substantiated. <laughs> Literally. It makes a claim of curvature. Inherently, if it's a ball, it's going to curve, right? So what we did was we went out and test the claim of curvature. We have long distance observations that are literal impossibilities on the globe Earth. We have observations of 273 miles. You're still not proving the Earth is flat and now what you're doing is using a technique I call peeing on your foot and trying to convince you it's raining. I noticed you didn't bring up the Jay Tolan photograph of Mount San Jacinto from 125 miles where over a mile of that mountain is missing. You talk about this picture that's taken from 273 miles, and it's been debunked countless times. It fits perfectly with what we would expect on a sphere with a radius of 3,959 miles. But this is by no means the record long distance photograph. This is the record long distance photograph. Apollo 8, 238,000 miles. The black swan was done from one foot observer height. The geometric horizon should be at 1.2 feet. In the circulation of the mean, we gave you five feet. That means it's the geometric horizon, the physical, literal, tangible piece of land that should cause obstruction of view. It can be no further than 2.73 miles. This isn't a debatable number, okay? This is necessitated by the geometry of the earth that they told you that you live on because you take the radius times 1.225 of the observer height and you get the geometric horizon. This so-called black swan photograph has been debunked so many times, I'm not going to waste any time on it. But in the first place, let me say this, you got the equation wrong. It's not 1.22 times the observer height. The distance in miles to the horizon is 1.22 times the square root of the observer height in feet. But that is without refraction. But this is not a photograph without refraction. This is a photograph with extreme refraction. This is a photograph with normal refraction. This is made by the same guy from the same place, from about the same camera height. This is what he normally sees. This is an image you need to explain because if your earth is flat, that horizon cannot be where it is. It has to always be behind every object. Any thoughts on that? And understand the implications of the falsification of the radius. The current connotation of gravity relies heavily on that number. That means gravity implodes, orbital trajectory implodes. Everything about the globe Earth model, the heliocentric model, relies on the radius of 3959, as does the 24 hour day and night cycle, the seasons, a mile, Everything relies on that radius.
So we have completely falsified the entirety of the model once we falsify the radius, which we have literally done. Go look at the black swan. Thanks, we just did, and that thing is deader than a doornail. Okay, now to touch on something that Globers love to say is gravity. Let me give you an example of when, when you know, Globers will invoke their little deified force known as gravity. At this point, I think we'll leave Wits at the Babylon about gravity and gas pressure and all the other stuff he doesn't understand. You know, he never did provide a single positive proof of a flat Earth. I wonder why that is. Could it be that the Earth isn't flat? Hmm. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And remember, when we say, how stupid can you be? That isn't a challenge, that's a question. How about hitting some of those little buttons down there? I would appreciate that. And a special shout out to the Patreons. You guys are terrific. It really helps and it helps the channel grow. So with that, I guess we'll catch you guys on the next one.